To start my presentation, I would like you to imagine the following. Imagine you've just had your final exams and are starting to look for a job. After applying to various companies though, you realize that despite having good grades, you aren't receiving any job offers. Well, I guess you shouldn't have crossed the street when the light was red to run on, to be on time at your exam. And you shouldn't go to the library when the date was due. And your uncle with alcohol problems also isn't making anything better for you. In short, your social credit must be deemed too low by the companies. This is a scenario that could happen to somebody living in China as I am speaking. This is why I think it's important that we have a look at China's social credit system. I would like to explain to you how it works and what the ethical implications might be for society in China, but also the global population. So what is this social credit system in the first place? The word credit stands for two types of credits here. On one hand, we have financial credit, which can be thought of something similar to the FICO scores in the United States. And we also have a social credit. I will get back to this in a uh, in short time. Together, these two credits create the social credit system. At the end of the 20th century, China was changing from a plan to a market economy. And they realized they have two major problems. A, practically everybody was paying in cash. And B, the country of China is huge to govern centrally. What is the problem of paying in cash? Well, it's easy. People can cheat because it's practically impossible to track any payments. I hope you can still hear me because the internet connection is unstable. Otherwise, just let me know. Anyhow, um, the problem with cash, okay, good. The problem with cash is that people can cheat. It's very difficult to track any payments. And as such, if I, for instance, am selling counterfeit goods and get caught, all I have to manage is to escape my province, go to a different region, and then nobody will have known of my past crimes. And I can start from new. So the problem at that time was that there was a huge lack of trust in the marketplace and in society in general. To tackle this problem, China's government thought of the social credit score system. The idea of the system is to rate all individuals, as well as companies, foreign or national, and also the government itself. And then this rating should represent how trustworthy an institution or a person is. Well, you still say China hasn't gotten any smaller, and that's very well true. To have an image, you can take the size of Europe, so it's practically the same surface area as China itself, but you would still have to first add the whole entire population of South America and the United States of America before you would have the same dimensions as China. Luckily for China, though, in the past couple of years, we have experienced huge leaps in information technology. Nowadays, it's possible with big data algorithms to process the huge amounts of data we produce on a daily basis and then also draw certain conclusions. So with these algorithms, it should be possible for the government and uh, companies to rate the data they get and as such also rate society. In addition, with the help of artificial intelligence, there are lots of means to gather new information and most certainly also lots of new possibilities to observe and surveil society with cameras, facial recognition, and whatnot. This is why in 2014, the Chinese government launched various pilot projects in shaping a social credit system. On one hand, there were local governments that implemented their own system, but they also gave eight private companies a license to deploy their own system. 
the goal of the government is to make a mandatory national system in this year. However, it isn't yet quite clear if they will build one unified system or if they will combine the different local systems into a broader, broader, broader subject, uh, excuse me, a broader system. In other words, it's not yet quite sure if the private companies will be acting more like spies for the government or if the private companies will be allowed to have certain freedoms of how they want to make their systems. What is clear, though, is that at the moment, the government is running a binary um, credit system. Binary means we have blacklists for bad behaving citizens and red lists for good behaving citizens. What I mean with binary is that if you're on a list, you have certain implications. However, if you're not on the list, nothing happens to you. So there's only one certain case. If you end up on a blacklist, for instance, you broke a certain law or you didn't behave the way the system would like you to behave, you will get severe punishments and also restrictions in your day-to-day -day life. For instance, you will get less job offers, as in the example I brought opening this presentation or you might not be allowed to take certain flights. You won't be allowed to board high-speed trains, or even worse, you won't be allowed to send your kids to the best university. On the other side, if you behave particularly well, you will profit from rewards. For instance, you might get better interest rates for loans, you might have an easier access to visas, maybe won't have to wait in line at the airport, have a faster check-in at hotel, and much more. But now let's have a look at, at, at a social credit system called Sesame Credit, which is run by an affiliate company from Alibaba. And they were one of the eight private companies who received a license to make their own system back in 2015. The difference between the system Sesame Credit shows and a blacklist system is that this system is no longer binary. Sesame Credit rates their users with points from 350 to 950. And here, every score matters, which means the higher your score is, the more rewards you will reap, but it can be, it's always proportional to your score. For instance, if you have a low score, it could be that your internet access is slower. On the other side, though, if you have a very high score, you will have better loans, you will have better term conditions when you want to rent a bike, a car, and much more. Let's have a look at how Sesame Credit calculates their score. Firstly, they take the credit history into account. In other words, they look at your payment history, and whether or not you have any debts. Next, they look at fulfillment capacity, which means they want to know if you have a steady income or not. After that, they have a look at your personal characteristics, which, mean, which means they look at how much information you have given them about yourself and how much of this information is also verified and true. Next, they also look at behavior and preferences. That means they look at which products you buy and what interests you have. Lastly, they also take into account your interpersonal relationships, which means how do you interact with your friends on their platform. Since Alibaba, as a huge online platform, has massive, massive amounts of data to tap into, they can make a pretty authentic score. And as such, it can also be said that with the help of Sesame Credit, the trust in the financial marketplace has been significantly raised because a lot less people are paying in cash now, thanks to Alipay, for instance, where you do all of your payments on, uh, with your phone. However, Sesame Credit goes much further than just ensuring a trustworthy marketplace. One example is getting a date. If you are registered on the dating platform offered by Alibaba, the higher your score is, the higher up you'll show up on a list. So it will also influence your chances of getting a date. Or like I've already mentioned, 
if your score isn't high enough, it could be that you no longer are allowed to travel to certain countries. Or you maybe will have to give a deposit when you try to rent a car. So you can say that Sesame Credit also rates you with very subjective factors. I mean, who can determine which products you buy are better than others? One person working for Sesame Credit once remarked that a person buying diapers will be deemed more trustworthy than someone buying video games because the person buying diapers must be a parent and thus more responsible. But it's very, very a huge guess to just assume someone buying diapers should be more trustworthy. I believe the big problem here is that people will stop doing things for the sake of doing something good, but they will only be doing things related to their score. If something makes the score better, well, then they will do this. As a result, people will stop losing their, will start losing their identities and will become more like things or numbers than human, human beings itself. I think this is very problematic. Another big issue is privacy. As people will be living in a mass surveillance state, it will be practically impossible to do something without being observed and rated. The problem here is that their algorithms only look at what data you generate, but not why you've generated this data. They don't take into account your context of behavior. As a result, it's also practically impossible to question the outcome of the scoring. On one hand, you don't know exactly how the algorithms work because the companies would like to keep their secrets to themselves. And on the other hand, the algorithm also makes the choice. So who is it to say it's, it's wrong? Accordingly, it's no surprise that if you get arrested in China, to 99%, you will also get sentenced to a punishment. I also believe that with this social credit system, people will be acting more like robots because they can only do what the system allows them to do. Since if you don't obey the rules, you will get severe punishments and restrictions in your day-to-day -day life. Let's have a look at who the stakeholders are. Foremost, the Chinese government plays a huge role in this social credit system because it was them who initiated the, this idea of such a system. And it's also the Chinese government who sets the rules and the guidelines. They choose which companies get a license to deploy their own private systems. Next, obviously, the private companies who are creating their own social credit systems have a major role. In total, you can say that private companies and the Chinese government together are the two parties who are setting the moral standards and ethical standards which society must follow. And more than this, because if you do not act the way the system wants to act, you will get punished. Naturally, though, the Chinese population also has a role to play because they generate the data and they use the system, which means that if the majority of the population won't be happy with how the system is being used, the government, even the government, will have to make adjustments. Finally, I also believe that the rest of the world plays a certain role. For instance, if you look at governments, they can uh, negotiate trading deals or traveling treaties with China, and these deals might influence to what extent the social credit system can reward its good um, citizens. Additionally, we as consumers always have a choice from where we would like to buy our products. And these products we buy from countries means that we're supporting the system in that country, we are supporting their economy. I think to make sure that this social credit system adheres to a certain sensitive, value sensitive design, there are a couple points that strictly must be followed and considered. Firstly, the scoring algorithm cannot solely be based on the raw numbers of the gathered data, but moreover, must bring 
data into context. For example, if I walk on the street and on the other side of the street, there is an elderly lady who trips. Naturally, it would be great if I went over and helped this lady. But if I cross the street when the light is red, I might actually get punished by the system for actually only wanting to do a good, a good uh, thing. In addition, there needs to be the right to question the decisions of the algorithm. I believe that it could be possible that the citizens have um, a certain place they can go to and, and then object to the outcome of the scoring, and then maybe there is a certain judge who can make the final decision. Lastly, it's also essential that the scoring process remains transparent and well-defined. So to say that the social credit system needs to define which behavior they deem good or bad, because it's not fair if the scoring can um, change your life so dramatically, but you don't actually know what the system wants from you. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Here are still my sources.